Hi, welcome to part 2 of the Hippocampus short lecture series. Today we will talk about Hippocampal sclerosis. Sclerosis comes from the Greek word scleros, which means hard. So in medicine, it means tissue hardening due to replacement of the normal tissue by fibrosis. Applying that to hippocampal sclerosis, it refers to the abnormal replacement of hippocampal neurons by the supporting cells. While we appreciate that these glial cells are trying to help, they cannot do what neurons are supposed to do. So one of the important neurons in the hippocampus are the interneurons. They balance the excitatory and inhibitory signals from the medial temporal lobe, which has many connections to other parts of the brain. So when interneurons are lost, these signals are no longer inhibited, thus producing the seizures. We have to understand the imaging findings of this condition because hippocampal sclerosis or mesial temporal sclerosis is the most common cause of temporal lobe epilepsy. Here is a coronal view of the brain focused on the temporal lobe. This is a T1 sequence. Note that the CSF is dark and the myelinated white fibers are bright. This is the hippocampus. If we take a closer look, We note this interlocking C appearance. The dentate gyrus and the cornu ammonis. The cornu ammonis has four portions, which are numbered one, two, four. The cornu ammonis blends with the subiculum, which is part of the cortex that is in contact with the dentate gyrus. This contact between the dentate gyrus and the subiculum obliterates the hippocampal sulcus. Notice here that portions 1 and 4 of the cornu ammonis are somewhat thick. And in CA4, the darkly staining pyramidal cell layer is distinct. Now compare portions 4 and 1 with the abnormal hippocampus seen here on your right. Notice that CA1 is thinner on the abnormal hippocampus. And in CA4, the darkly staining pyramidal cell layer is much less distinct here on the right. This is a case of hippocampal sclerosis. In hippocampal sclerosis, neuronal loss in the hippocampus is responsible to what we see on imaging. We see volume loss. And when neurons die, they get replaced with gliosis. Hence the T2 hyperintense signal. In the brain, if we have volume loss in one portion, we will see an increase in volume in the adjacent structures because the overall intracranial volume should remain the same. These secondary findings are clues we should look out for. So if the hippocampus is small, the lateral margin formed by the temporal horn, this structure, 
will be enlarged, and the choroidal fissure, which is superior to the hippocampus, is more prominent. And inferiorly, there is atrophy of the collateral white matter. In addition to seeing a small hippocampus, we also note a small fornix and a small mammillary body on the ipsilateral side or on the same side. Why is this so? This is because the hippocampus connects with the mammillary body and in turn to the thalamus via the fornix. Therefore, if the cells die in the hippocampus, the pathway those neurons take are also atrophied. In summary, we learned that the findings in hippocampal sclerosis are due to neuronal cell loss. The cells die, creating a small hippocampus with gliosis, which is seen as a hyperintense signal on T2. We also note secondary changes brought about by the volume loss. This may be seen within the temporal lobe, such as the enlarged temporal horn of the lateral ventricle, or in extratemporal structures. Extratemporal structures are those that are traversed by the hippocampal tracts, such as the ipsilateral mammillary body and fornix. That ends part 2 of this lecture series. If you want to see part 1, I will leave the link below. Thank you very much and I hope to see you on the next video.